writing in McTaggart has been quite a welcome distraction from some of the other nightmares much closer to home. <laughs> yes, you have met some of my family before. <laughs> the, uh, the committee may be less than keen on women, but by God, you do love a Murdoch. <laughs> I am firmly with Dennis Potter when he said the job of television is to make hearts pound. No wonder then that with my somewhat romantic tendencies and possibly a slight genetic disposition to aim high, I was <laughs> determined to jump in and start making television that changed the world. The reality, of course, was not quite as grand. Against the advice of most of those closest to me and to the bemusement of many in our industry, I set off from Skye and swapped an executive package in Isleworth for an empty room off Labrook Grove. There I embraced an unknown world where my learning curve was like a brick wall that smacked me in the face every morning. It would be fair to surmise that starting Shine in 2001 wasn't just a rational business decision. It could have also been classified as an act of willful madness. But at the root of it, it was an act of faith. I set out to build Shine because I believe that television has the power to enliven and enrich people's lives, no matter where or who they are. Obviously, news is also a company that is currently asking itself some very significant and difficult questions about how some behaviors fell so far short of its values. Personally, I believe one of the biggest lessons of the past year has been the need for any organization to discuss, affirm, and institutionalize a rigorous set of values based on an explicit statement of purpose. Despite a valuable contribution to this debate, James ended his lecture with a line in which he claimed that the only reliable and perpetual guarantor of independence is profit. He clearly intended that statement to be provocative. And it is. But I also think that it deserves further analysis. James was right that if you remove profit, then independence is massively challenged. But I think that he left something out. The reason his statement sat so uncomfortably is that profit without purpose is a recipe for disaster. It is increasingly apparent that the absence of purpose or of a moral language within government, media, or business could become one of the most dangerous own goals for capitalism and for freedom. Independence may be characterized by the absence of the apparatus of supervision and dependency, as James said. But independence from regulation and the freedom we need to innovate and grow is only democratically viable when we accept that we have a responsibility to each other and not just to our bottom line. Profit must be our servant, not our master. At the moment, the BBC seems to be the furthest ahead in understanding that our new world demands new ecosystems. Under the vision and leadership of Mark Thompson, the BBC has been the market leader for building new relationships and services with creatives from every sector. Let me put it on the record that I am a current supporter of the BBC's 
universal license fee. It's because the fee is universal that the BBC has a unique purpose, and it continues to act as a strategic catalyst to the creative industries of this great country. Though I do imagine that George Entwistle's biggest challenge may be to demonstrate how efficiently that funding is being spent on actual content on behalf of the license fee payers. My dad had the vision, the will, and the sense of purpose to challenge the old world order on behalf of the people. He, he literally bet our house on it. My parents spoke to us vividly over the breakfast table about what this purpose meant, and that we could be obliged to be permanent outsiders and constant nomads. But even back then, I understood that we were in pursuit of a greater good, a belief in better. A mission to improve the world doesn't turn business into some social agency. It makes business great. The late Steve Jobs said, being the richest man in the cemetery doesn't matter to me. Going to bed at night saying we've done something wonderful, that's what matters to me. We have to acknowledge and dedicate ourselves to our purpose, which is to tell great stories, to inspire our audience, and to contribute to a sense of community. If we follow this course with diligence and conviction, then we will find that we too are laying the foundations of a new cathedral, this one combining the keystones of both Steve Jobs and Lord Wreath. Thank you for inviting me here tonight. It's been an honor and a pleasure. I very much hope that the committee asks another woman to deliver this lecture next year, but if it's another Murdoch you're after, I'm afraid my two kid sisters may need just a little bit more time. Thank you very much and good night.